<laughs> First up tonight is an Ackland from Auckland. New Zealand raised, but now London based Ashley Ackland, who's ready to raise the roof in the den. I gotta bring my, my dragon. Ooh. Bring it, darling. Rawr. <laughs> I'm bringing the party everywhere I go. <laughs> Cheers. Let's smash this. Ashley is a big fan of dressing up, but today she's dressed down for the den. Though these pants are really outrageous, I've definitely worn much more outrageous things in much more conservative places, so these are quite, like, toned down for me. The entrepreneur is hoping to get the investors out of their chairs. I would love to see some dragons sliding into their party whip and showing us their best moves. Glittery pants. Oh, these are right up our street, Deborah. But she's slightly worried one dragon might not be down with her designs. I don't know if Tuka will kind of get my business. It's quite, like, young. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> That's so harsh. Please don't put that in. <laughs> My name is Ashley Ackland. I'm here today seeking £50,000 and a dragon in exchange for 20% equity of my business, Sparklebub, the disco-inspired, gender-neutral party wear brand. I spent my 20s working in festivals and events around the world. It was at these events that I noticed a gap in the market. The only place that you could buy flamboyant, sparkly clothing was in the women's section. So I designed two products to be worn by anyone with a butt, our party pants and our booty shorts. Our customers, on average, they're age um, 28 to 40 and are incredibly loyal to our brand. What I have been running as a side hustle for the last four years is now ready to scale. In 2019, our second year of business, we started to gain some real momentum, turning over 26K. The following two lockdown years were a bumpy road for a party pants company, but we survived. And we're on track to turn over over £350,000 in three years. Thank you for listening. Thank you to my beautiful models. And <laughs> if you look inside your boxes, you'll see some sparkly delights. Sparkly party wear is the concept on offer from Ashley Ackland. I want to know what that means. It means well done, darling. <laughs> oh, Fabulous. I like that. Well done. I do that all the time. I didn't know that's what I meant, but I do that all the time. <laughs> I, was, I, I thought it meant show me the money. <laughs> Ashley's asking for £50,000 in return for a 20% chunk of her business. Are they comfortable? I can boogie all night in these, and I have many times. There's only one way to really know if they're comfortable. I have to say, I didn't expect Tuka to be the one to put them on. Can we get some groovy music on, please? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Wow, he's really going. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the sparkle that effect, guys. A dazzling demo from the dragon that Ashley was worried wouldn't appreciate her product. Ashley, you said about your demographic where it's between 28 to 40. Yeah. You've just had a 69-year-old dancing yeah. in the den. True. Yeah. 20-year-old hearts. <laughs> How did you feel in those? Flirtatious. <laughs> <laughs> Tuka Suleiman might be feeling flirty, but it's Stephen Bartlett who's first to find out if Ashley's proposition is promising or pants. Uh, while Tuka's catching his breath, I'm going to ask you some questions. Is it your idea? Yeah, this, is, I, this whole thing is just me, it's a one-man band. I started by making them my, myself, like one by one, and then I started working with a seamstress, and then we moved to working with a factory in Tottenham, and then we moved my manufacturing abroad. And how many SKUs do you have? We've got seven colours, and we've got two styles. My partner Tara, those shorts there that you've got, she has some yeah. very similar to that, mm -hmm. and she rocks it. Mm -hmm. I love them. It certainly gets a lot of attention. So, look, I think there is a market for this. Yeah. I was really impressed when you said you started making them yourself, so... Yeah. 
Let's take the trousers. Mm -hmm. So what does one of the pair of trousers cost you? They are £24, and that is, like, door-to-door. -door. And what do you sell them for? 93 Sell for 93 mm -hmm. uh, They're very good quality, by the way. I, you know, have, having, having seen how well they're made, I wouldn't balk at paying 93 Um So what's the average high street price for a pair of sparkly trousers? Um, depends on the store, really. You can get, like, a £2,000 pair from Gucci, or you can get $20, like, joke shop ones from Amazon that don't have lining and they give you what I call sparkle cuts yeah. from the sequins. The thing is, the, my customers are buying these not just as a disposable wear once to a festival. Like, my customers wear these products again and again and again, so they, they're happy to invest in things that are going to last the distance. Clothes that can withstand a regular run-out is Ashley's justification for her product's pricing. Stephen Bartlett now wants to find out if there's any glitter when it comes to her garment sales. So take me through some of the, those numbers then. So I got 2019, you did 26,000 in revenue. 26,000, that yeah. was a 16 gross. Yeah. And a net of 300. And then the following year was 8.7 and a net of minus 3.5. Yeah. And then t 21 was 24K with a net of 4.5. And you're projecting this year? I'm projecting this year will be 107 with a net of eight. And how are you doing so far this year? We have done 19. So where's the 80 plus K gonna come from? We haven't yet hit our peak season. Like the first five months are, are normally quite a quiet period for us. And you said that in three years' time, I believe, you're going to be making 350 k That's with no investment. That's just what it will do. But so I believe the, with the, the, the size of the market, like, if we just go after people in the UK or US that attend one festival a year that are age 28 to 40, there's 3.2 million. So if we go after just, like, 1% of that, that's a multi-million pound business, you know? So. I, th I think that there's a real market for this. Ashley is really fighting her corner in an effort to prove the potential of her product. And it seems the den's dancing dragon and clothing connoisseur has also seen some possibilities with her idea. There is a market for this, definitely. But you've got a very small startup business still. And I think if you're focused on festivals alone, I don't see a, the business being a big business. I'm definitely not focused on festivals alone. I want to own the party wear space in the same way that Lululemon owns the yoga space or in the same way that Nike owns the running space. No one is currently owning the party space. Whoa, you're ambitious. How do you do that? I think that I would do it by building the the brand. So we've had four years so far, roughly. You're in your fourth year of trading. Can you give me an idea of how big this brand is using some metrics? Like our Instagram followers? Yeah, like your online... Yeah, we've got 4,800 followers on Instagram. 4,000 followers in four years isn't a big community or brand. And for that reason, I think you're probably just a little bit too early for the investment. I love the products and 100% I'd buy it <laughs> to go to parties and festivals in. But as an investment, um, it's not standing out for me in the same way. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you the very best. Stephen Bartlett likes the clobber, but not enough to cover the company. And Ashley is a dragon down. Now, Deborah Meaden is wondering what she could bring to the pants party. What do you think a dragon can do to boost your brand? Yeah, just taking it global. Like, I'm only really targeting, really, really targeting the, U the UK at the moment, and I think there's a lot of opportunity globally. I think that kind of scares me, because it worries me when people haven't really owned their home market, and then they start thinking going global is going to solve the issue. Own your home market mm -hmm. before you try and take over the world, because that way lies disaster. For that reason, um, I don't see it as an investment. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Ashley, um, I think you've been reasonable on what you're asking for. 
because you've not come in saying, I want 50,000 for 5%. Mm. And I'm sure you're willing to go, you know, negotiate that 20%. But it's very clear, you've got a very small business and you're in the very, very early stages. And that makes it incredibly challenging to invest in. This is a great side hustle, but for now, it's not an investment. I'm going to say I'm out. Well, look, I'm in the apparel business, but not, not this end. Yeah. It is a very niche market. Is it a business that needs lots and lots of attention and time? Yes, it is. And is it a business that's going to need a lot more money? Yes, it is. So, unfortunately, as an investment today, it's too small for me. I'm not going to invest them out. To Kusuliman ends his interest, and four dragons have now passed on the proposition. Only Sarah Davies remains. Do the party pants have a place in her portfolio? Actually, I totally disagree with what a lot of the other dragons have said. They keep saying you're very early stage in the business, but you're four years in. Mm. Now, granted, I appreciate we've had a lockdown in the middle of that, but still you've had, I think, plenty of opportunity to build the brand, and I just don't think you've quite got enough traction there. And I just think, even if we try and supercharge this business to the max, it's not going to be a big enough return to really incentivize me to want to put my time and energy and money behind this business. So it's not an investment for me today, and I'm out. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks it's for coming in. Ashley's idea fails to sparkle in the den, and she departs without a deal. I am feeling so glad that that's over. <laughs> but yeah, I'm all good. Even though I didn't get any investment today, I'm just gonna, yeah, keep going, grow the business, and I'm gonna own that party wear space. Well, all I can say is I'm gonna take these home to Tara. <laughs>